Next week's masterclass is conducted by Jane Dudley, who's taught at the London School of Contemporary Dance for over 15 years and who believes that dancing is not just a technique. You have to train a young dancer's mind and imagination as well as the body. That's next Saturday evening at ten past eight. Over on BBC One in a minute, the news is followed by Match of the Day with the FA Cup semi-finals. Here on two in a moment, Film Club with American Graffiti. Starting this Wednesday on BBC Two, Arnold Bennett's classic story set in the 1860s in the town of Bursley. A tale of two sisters, Sophia and Constance. They is real romance, Con. Who look forward to very different futures. Paris. Which for Sophia means adventure. Not the grime of St. Luke Street. Not here. Not Bursley. Sophia, I'm ashamed of you. While Constance, respectful and obedient, is ever mindful of her parents' wishes. I shall tell Mother. Sophia, <laughs> you are a horrid, cruel woman, and I hate you. I have fretted and fussed over those girls until I've no longer been sure which way to turn. Sophia and Constance, a major new television drama beginning this Wednesday at 9.25 and repeated next Saturday at 8.50 on 2. And now on 2, here's John Byrne to introduce this week's Film Club. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. What is that rag so? Join me home. We'll have some fun when the clock strikes. Where were you in 62? Me? Well, I certainly wasn't within a toasted weenie's length of Mel's Drive-In, where moonlighting sophomores roller skate big boy burgers and cherry cokes to the ranks of waiting Chevys where Wolfman Jack prowls the airwaves and Herbie and the Heartbeats, a.k.a. Flash Cadillac and the Continental Kids, buddy up and pay homage to a not-so-long deceased Holly at the high school hop. This is small town USA, where sawn off hot rods cruise the strip and every teenage girl looks or is told by every teenage boy that she looks like Connie Stevens. You know, I always thought I looked like Sandra Dewey. Oh, yeah, we well, look a lot like her too. All of this is never more perfectly captured than in George Lucas's highly enjoyable 1973 movie, American Graffiti, a technicolored hymn to hot music, cool dudes, and young love. Not that all the dudes are cool, thank God. I laughed aloud as Terry the Geek made his appearance shortly after the opening titles and promptly crashed his bucking Vespa straight into the drive-in's Coke dispenser. They don't come much more uncool than Terry. The story is quite straightforward, uncomplicated. Four friends, Steve, Kurt, John Milner, and the aforementioned Dumbo Terry, meet up at Mel's before going their separate ways for a night's fun prior to Steve and Kurt's departure for college out east the following day. Steve lends the geek his Chevrolet and goes to the high school dance with Laurie, his steady. Oh yes, and the geek meets the girl. Geek gets liquor, geek loses car, but strangely not the girl. A delightful performance incidentally from Candy Clark as Debbie. In fact, all the performances are great. When did you last see an American movie star with real teeth? They've got them in this picture. Richard Dreyfus, looking remarkably but not unbelievably boyish. Paul Lamatt, very engaging as the town's Mr. Cool. Ronnie Howard, now the accomplished director of Splash and George Lucas's new production, Willow, as Steve. And for me, best of all, Charlie Martin Smith, one of the new untouchables as Terry the Toad, geekest of geeks white bucks and matching munchers. Oh yes, and a soundtrack with about 400 great rock and roll numbers on it. From She's So Fine to Love Potion Number no. 9, sung by the Clovers. Francis Ford Coppola produced, Marcia Lucas cut the film. George Lucas co-wrote and directed. Sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> 